Say what la question? Say what la question? Et c'est moi la question, c'est moi la question. Avec qui tu cantes, qui tu cantes, qui tu cantes. This is the story of the wild grey parrots. It is a story of a place in Africa where the wildlife still congregate by the thousands. It is a story of how animals relate to and even create their own environments. It is a story of social and cultural traditions among highly intelligent animals. It is also a sad story of the use and abuse of wild animals and the exploitation of wildlife in developing countries. We hope that you'll help us end this sad chapter and secure the future of these amazing wild birds. We all know the African Grey. It's the parrot with a remarkable ability to mimic virtually any sound in its environment. Indeed, of the hundreds of parrots in the world, the Grey is the only parrot known to mimic other birds and mammals in the wild. But it turns out that it's more than just mimicry. Dr. Pepperberg's experiments with the famous Alex have demonstrated that the intelligence of the African Grey parrot is on par with that of the great apes, the dolphins, and even human toddlers. How many? Yeah. That's right. Can you tell me what's different? What color. That's right. What color bigger? Shape. No, what color bigger? What color bigger? Green. Green is right. Good boy. Grays are also one of the most common pet parrots. Many of these birds are still being trapped in the wild and shipped to Europe and Asia for sale in the pet trade. The numbers are quite staggering. From 1995 through 1999, about 175,000 wild-caught African grey parrots were legally traded. Although no one knows the exact number in captivity, these trade figures suggest that there may be well over a million greys in cages around the world. But where did all these birds come from, and how do they live in the wild? The grey parrot, which is known to science as Psittacus erythicus, occurs naturally only in Africa, specifically in the rainforests of Central Africa. In 1995, a student of Dr. Pepperberg's by the name of Diana May traveled to the Congo Basin and launched the first scientific study of wild African grey behavior. One of many sites like this in Central Africa, these clearings attract a wide variety of wildlife species including large ungulates such as the bongo, the sidatunga, forest buffalo, and a number of bird species such as these hartlaub ducks. But the animals with the overwhelming physical presence are the forest elephants. In some cases, over 2,500 individual elephants have been identified as visitors of just one clearing. Amazingly, these clearings were apparently created by the elephants themselves. The idea being that enough elephant traffic in a wet area, with all their tree-eating, massive clomping around and hole digging, quickly turns the place into an open and swampy clearing. Most of these animals have one thing in common. They eat primarily leaves and fruits, and they travel great distances to visit clearings, to eat soil, to drink water, and in some cases to eat special aquatic plants that grow only here in the clearings. But it was the smaller grey animals with brilliant crimson tails that drew Diana to this site, the African grey parrot, to be exact. And they come by the thousands, landing, walking, and hopping along the ground. These parrots are after the same water and soil and aquatic plants, which are available only in the clearings. On a typical day, the greys arrive early in the morning and congregate in the trees around the perimeter of the clearing. It's a rather noisy assembly, because the more greys that arrive and join the group, the louder it gets, until eventually, the gathering becomes thunderous. After a large number have assembled, say anywhere from 50 to 100 birds, the greys will slowly make their way to the ground to forage. Typically, an individual remains on the ground 
for only a few minutes before flying back up to the safety of the trees. This relay can go on for a couple of hours, but most often they forage in the clearing for only about an hour. But greys remain at the clearing for most of the morning, and sometimes they forage on the ground past noon, before heading off into the rainforest, where they forage on fruits, seeds, and flowers, and basically get back to being a proper parrot. <laughs>